talk is about Lord Nelson and his Merton connections. Admiral Viscount Lord Nelson was undoubtedly one of the greatest naval commanders this country has ever produced. Guarded as a national hero in life and elevated to cult status in death, he was a complex character and a tactical genius. Nelson was by no means perfect. He could be vain at times, impetuous in the heat of battle, and his behaviour towards his wife bordered on cruelty. However, he also inspired in his family, friends, and those under his command an intense sense of love and loyalty. News of his death in 1805 led to an unprecedented outpouring of public grief across the nation. During the 19th century, Nelson shared Merton Place, an estate combining land from both the Merton and Wimbledon parishes, with his lover, Lady Emma Hamilton, and her successful older husband, Sir William. Also during Nelson's later residency, he welcomed Horatia, his secret daughter by Emma. Nelson's residence here was brief and punctuated by lengthy periods at sea, but he loved the peace and charm of the area he termed dear, dear Merton. Originally known as Moat House Farm, Merton Place was built circa 1750 for Mr. Henry Pratt. It was much enlarged by its subsequent owner, Sir Richard Hotham, a wealthy hat manufacturer, made famous for his role in developing and popularising Bognor Regis as a visitor destination for the wealthier members of Georgian society. The estate later passed to Charles Greaves, a partner in the local calico printing works. By 1801, Lord Nelson had separated from his loyal first wife, Fanny, and was keen to find a home where he could entertain his friends. Acting on his behalf, his lover, Lady Emma Hamilton, purchased Merton Place plus 70 acres from Greaves' widow for the sum of £9,000. This money was lent by a Mr Davidson and other friends. Emma set about turning the house and associated farm into a suitably grand home and estate, assisted by her mother, Mary Cadogan. Nelson first arrived in Merton on the 23rd of October 1801. The parish then had a population of 813 people living in 147 houses focused around the High Street and St Mary's Church. The main employment was agriculture, domestic service and work in the mills along the banks of the River Wandle. Nelson is said to have been charmed by the area and delighted with his new home. Wealthier members of society may have shunned him due to his unusual domestic arrangements, but he was adored by ordinary Merton residents, many of whom crowded the local streets to greet him and even erected a triumphal arch to welcome his arrival. Nelson soon began enlarging his estate, partly to increase privacy. He bought land from his neighbour James Harpide, a successful calico printer who lived in Gate House near Merton High Street. A further 113 acres were purchased from William Axe, and another small parcel to the north of Merton High Street was leased from Thomas Bennett, owner of a calico printing works at Merton Abbey, now the site of Merton Abbey Mills Craft Market. In total, the estate covered some 160 acres. The house and garden lay in the parish of Merton in around one and a half acres, whilst the shrubbery, stables and pleasure grounds were in the parish of Wimbledon. The estate stretched from north of the High Street to Quicks Road and south beyond High Park. The eastern boundary was Haydens Road and Abbey Road, whilst the western boundary was Merton Road and Morden Road. This picture shows the Nelson Arms pub built in 1910. This marks the site of the entrance gates to Lord Nelson's former Merton home. The facade is decorated with a unique series of tiled murals by Garters of Paul, depicting the famous naval commander and his flagship HMS Victory. The two halves of Nelson's estate were linked by a brick-lined tunnel under Merton High Street, wide enough to carry a coach and four horses to enable the residents of Merton Place to travel about the estate in privacy. Impressions of Merton Place seem to have varied. Following a visit in 1802, Lord Minto wrote, the whole establishment and way of life is such to make me angry. The whole house, staircase and all are covered with nothing but pictures of her and him, all sorts of sizes and representations of his naval actions, coats of arms, pieces of plate in his honour, an excess of vanity which counteracts his own purpose. Initially, the house was described as a one wing property with an annex. It had a rather cramped ground floor, hall, kitchen and dining room, with a drawing room and a library on one side. Upstairs, there were eight bedrooms with rather limited toilets and washing facilities. Following the death of her husband and Nelson's recall to the fleet in May 1805, Lady Hamilton devoted her energies to redeveloping the property. Assisted by architect Thomas Chawner, she altered the layout of Merton Place, turning it into a fine double-fronted house with a grand entrance. 
A new drawing room was installed in addition to bedrooms, water closets and a kitchen annex. The dining room was enlarged and an external walkway was created, leading to a white summer house christened The Poop, designed to make Nelson feel as if he was on his own quarter deck. Horatio was anxious about the spiralling costs and the state of Emma's health. Many people were unaware that she had recently lost a second child. However, on the Admiral's return to England in August 1805, he was delighted by the transformation of Merton Place. Even the critical Saminto wrote that Nelson looks remarkably well and full of spirits. Lady Hamilton has improved and added to the house. She is a clever being after all. The years spent at Merton Place were amongst the happiest of Nelson's life. The house was regularly filled with guests, including the Admiral's relatives, his elderly father, brother and nieces, plus fellow naval officers. Emma organised grand dinner parties and from September 1805, the couple were joined by their daughter Horatia, who had previously lodged elsewhere to avoid a scandal. On most days, at least a dozen guests were invited to dinner, many of them staying overnight, and when not entertaining, Nelson spent his time walking around his estate, managing his farm and visiting friends in the area. This building is Eagle House, built in 1613 for the city merchant Robert Bell, one of the founding members of the East India Company. The house was of sturdy construction with brick walls nearly two feet thick. Much of the lower building was, re was reinforced with stone and strong oak timbers. There was a finely panelled hall and many of the rooms had ornately decorated plasterwork ceilings. During the late 18th century, the house became the Wimbledon School for Young Noblemen and Gentlemen, run by the Reverend Thomas Lancaster. Amongst his esteemed guests were Lord Nelson and Lady Emma Hamilton, who visited the school in September 1805 and were entertained in the front parlour by recitations from the schoolboys. The property was then duly renamed Nelson House School. By the 1860s, the property was a private school run by Dr Huntingford. He is credited with naming the building Eagle House, having installed an ornamental stone eagle on the central gable. During the late 19th century, it became home to eminent architect Sir Thomas Jackson, who restored the property. And from 1988, the building belonged to the Al Khan Islamic Heritage Foundation, which funded more painstaking restoration work. And in recent years, it's recently been converted into luxury flats. Southside House in Wimbledon was built in the 17th century for Robert Pennington, a supporter of Charles II, who benefited from his restoration to the throne in 1658. Known to have been visited by royalty, especially Frederick, Prince of Wales in 1750, it's said to have been used for the prince's romantic trysts. During the early 19th century, it's also said to have been visited by Nelson and Lady Hamilton, who was said to have performed her famous attitudes, poses recreating classical scenes or art, take which took place in the music room. It's not clear if the story is actually true. Controversy surrounding Nelson's domestic arrangements meant that he was sometimes shunned by supposedly scandalised members of the aristocracy. In fact, there are tales of his attendance at Grand Society events where aristocrats literally turned their back on him. During the early 20th century, the house became home to the famous Swedish physician, psychiatrist and author Axel Munch, whose second wife was Hilda Pennington Moer. Southside was one of their family homes, and it was later used by their son Malcolm, a hero of the Special Operations Office Executive in World War II. In more recent years, it's been run by the Pennington Mellor Trust as a visitor attraction, but has now sadly closed. This picture shows Merton Mill, built during the 18th century on the site of a much earlier mill, and in 1796, this plot was purchased from William Knight Welsh by James Perry, a Scottish journalist and editor of the Morning Chronicle, then the most successful London radical newspaper. He built Wandle Bank House in about 1791. Perry is known to have been a personal friend of Nelson. In fact, one of his eight children was named Horatia Anne. And Lord Nelson is said to have visited Wandle Park House on a number of occasions together with Emma and Sir William Hamilton. The Admiral and Sir William, known to have been a keen angler, are said to have fished in the nearby Wandle, which was then renowned as one of the best trout streams in England. The park was once the site of Wandle Bank House and it was owned by James Perry until 1821. Perry is commemorated with a memorial at St Mary's Parish Church in Wimbledon and Wandle Park House was demolished in 1962. This picture shows Morden Lodge off Morden Hall Road. This was built during the early 1800s. It was a grand house that was the home of Dutch Jewish financier Abraham Goldschmidt. Together with his brother, he established a successful financial brokerage, the forerunner of Baring's Bank. 
In 1792, the Goldschmidt brothers had amassed a considerable fortune. Benjamin Goldschmidt owned a fine Roehampton estate, including 200 acres of land and a house so magnificent it was compared to Windsor Castle. His charitable works included the foundation of the Naval Asylum Greenwich and the Jewish Hospital in Mile End. As friends and associates of Prime Minister William Pitt, Goldschmidt provided primary financial support for British military campaigns against Napoleonic France, and they were responsible for securing government loans which helped to amass their vast personal fortune. His Abraham Goldschmidt's fine modern home was decorated by Crace and Sons who also worked on the Brighton Pavilion. Abraham had many powerful friends and the opening of Morden Lodge was attended by the Prince Regent, two Dukes, the playwright Sheridan and over 300 guests. Nelson and the Hamiltons were also close personal friends and are said to have visited the house on several occasions. In 1810, the sudden death of Goldschmidt's business partner Francis Baring prompted a stock market panic. Fearing ruin, Abraham committed suicide. Morden Lodge was tarnished by the scandal and was soon demolished. This picture shows Mitcham Cricket Green, and cricket is said to have been played here since the 1690s. Lord Nelson reportedly travelled by carriage with Lady Hamilton from his Merton home to watch the local team in action. Prior to his departure for the Battle of Trafalgar, the Admiral reputedly gave a young player, 15-year-old John Bowyer, a shilling to drink to the confusion of the French forces. John, shown here in a caricature, later became an esteemed Mitcham and Surrey player between 1810 and 1828, and was also an umpire for over 30 years. In Nelson's day, the Mitcham cricket team had changing rooms in the nearby Cricketers Inn, whilst the scorer was stationed on the pub balcony. The original inn was bombed during World War II and replaced by a, built a second pub in, in 1958. This has since been replaced by flats known as Cricketers House. Nelson was the son of a Norfolk parson and a devout Christian. During his time at Merton, he was a regular worshipper at the parish church of St Mary's Merton, riding over to the church together with members of his household and extended family. Somewhere in the churchyard, there may still be the remains of Nelson's mounting stone. This is said to have been used by the Admiral as a step to help him back into the saddle before the horse ride back to Merton Place. As a squire of Merton and a leading figure in the local community, he would also have been expected to attend Sunday services. Nelson was much welcomed by the local vicar, Reverend Thomas Lancaster, and in Nelson's day, the church would still have had a gallery to the rear of the nave for musical accompaniments and retained its box pews. These were removed during the Victorian era. As a man of wealthy status, Nelson would have had his own private pew near the front of the nave. In addition to regular services, Nelson also attended the church for a number of baptisms, including that of Lady Hamilton's maid. Fatima Koshibor was a 20-year-old Coptic Christian woman brought to the UK from Egypt by Lord Nelson following his victory at the Battle of the Nile. She's said to have been a gift for his lover, Lady Emma Hamilton. It's not, known, not clear whether Fatima was a slave or a servant of free status. The former seems most likely. Fatima worked as Lady Hamilton's maid and they also have cared for Horatia, Emma and Nelson's young daughter. In 1801, Lord William Douglas wrote a skit on life at Merton Place, which refers to Fatima. This goes, let not poor Quashibor, fair lady, think because her skin is blacker than ink, that from the muse so attached and true, there in her cheek there bloom no gushing rose, our muse nor colour nor distraction knows. Save of the heart, and quashy balls, I know, is pure and spotless as a one night snow. Fatima is said to have been adopted by the Hamilton family and held in high regard. She was baptised by Reverend Lancaster at St Mary's Merton at Nelson's request and given family names. The parish register records Hamilton, Fatima, Emma, Charlotte, Nelson from Egypt, a negress about 20 years of age, under the protection of the Right Honourable Lady Hamilton, was baptised April 26, 1802. In later life, possibly after the deaths of Nelson and Lady Hamilton, Fatima's mind is said to have become disturbed. It's not clear if this was the result of mental illness, some life trauma or dementia in old age. Sadly, she's said to have ended her days in an asylum. But Mary's Merton was also the venue for the baptism of Nelson's godson the following year. He was the son of William Suckling Esquire and was born on the morning of the 31st of December 1803 in the borough of Windsor and he was christened Nelson in the parish church of Merton on the 6th day of September 1805. Today St Mary's treasures a wooden bench, the remains of Nelson's box pew, which can be seen at the front of the nave. 
His funerary hatchment and that of Sir William Hamilton are also displayed just under the roof line in the church interior. During the 19th, 18th and 19th centuries, when someone of status died, it was common practice to display their coat of arms on a hatchment outside their residence as a mark of respect. The two hatchments shown here would have been commissioned by Lady Hamilton in 1803 and 1805 respectively, and displayed outside Merton Place. Lady Hamilton later donated them to the local church. Much loved by local people, Nelson was greatly mourned and fondly remembered following his death at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. The daughter of the Merton vicar, Thomas Lancaster, wrote, I cannot refrain from informing you of his unlimited charity and goodness during his residence at Merton. His frequently expressed desire was that none in that place would want or suffer affliction that he could alleviate, and this I know he did with a liberal hand, always desiring that it should not be known whence it came. After Nelson's death, Lady Hamilton was grief-stricken and sought to drown her sorrows with lavish entertaining and gambling. Even with an income of a thousand pounds per annum from her late husband and Lord Nelson, she fell into spiralling debt. Despite the efforts of a group of Nelson's friends acting as trustees, it was necessary to sell Merton Place, and this was purchased by Abraham Goldschmidt for £12,930. By 1815, although still intact and un unfurnished, the house remained empty possibly tarnished by Goldschmidt's suicide in 1810. Sale particulars of 1815 described five spacious bedchambers with dressing rooms and water closets and eight servants' rooms, excellent cellars for wine and beer, and a detached dairy and ice house. Around the house was a channel leading from the Wander, which Emma called the Nile, in honour of Nelson's famous 1798 naval victory. This was spanned by an Italian bridge and stocked with fish. After several more years lying empty, Merton Place was finally demolished in 1823. This, this picture shows the sale particulars for the estate. Any old, in 1823, any unsold land surrounding Nelson's former home was divided into plots and offered for auction. The size of each plot was said to be sufficiently adequate for detached villas. By 1863, much of this area had been purchased by the British Land Company and was used to build rows of terraced housing known as Nelson Fields. Asher Goldsmith sold the remaining portion of the Merton estate to Charles Smith in 1826. Smith shared Abbey House, an adjoining property in Merton High Street, with his brother Rear Admiral Isaac Smith, who sailed aboard the Endeavour with Captain James Cook and was nephew of Cook's wife Eliza, and famously became the first Englishman to set foot on Australian soil. Nelson's former farmland remained with Smith's descendants until the interwar era when it was used for a factory estate. Much of the Wimbledon portion of the Nelson estate remained in the ownership of the Goldschmidt family until the 1840s. It was later used for terraced housing with suitable road names such as Nelson Road, Hamilton Road, Trafalgar Road and Victory Road. This picture shows, shows St John the Divine Church on High Path. This was designed by architect C. Gage and built in 1913-1914 to mark the anniversary of the death of Lord Nelson. The Admiral's house, Merton Place, stood near the site and the church lies on ground which was formerly part of Nelson's 160-acre estate. The church is gothic in style and includes stained glass designed by the pre-Raphaelite artist Edward Byrne Jones, a partner in the successful art and craft works founded by William Morris and transferred to Merton in 1801. And the altarpiece in the church is said to have been made from timber taken from Nelson's flagship HMS Victory. Like the church, Nelson Gardens Recreation Ground was created on a parcel of land donated by the great nephew of Rear Admiral Isaac Smith to mark the centenary of Nelson's death. The site holds a commemorative plaque and a fine pair of 12 pounder guns once thought to have adorned the lawn of Merton Place. Much of the Merton portion of Nelson's 160 acre estate now lies under a high park council estate, a local government housing initiative started in the early 1950s. The name Merton Place was given to a block of flats on Dole Close, which covers the site of the Admiral's former residence. Abandoned by Nelson's brother William and denied the pension due to her, Emma was hurt by the snub of Nelson's family, particularly his niece Charlotte Matcham, for whom she had paid for her education, clothing and holiday fees out of fondness. Suffering spiralling debts, Emma was forced to recognise that Merton Place needed to be sold, and she moved to a succession of smaller properties, ending up finally in debtors' prison in 1811 and 1812, having been sentenced by the King's Bench in Southwark. However, she was allowed to live in rooms nearby with Horatia rather than the jail itself. She petitioned the Prince of, Prince of Wales, the government and friends for help, 
had ignored and obliged to auction her possessions, including many sentimental Nelson relics. Public opinion gradually turned against her when private letters between herself and Nelson were published in 1814. She fled the country disguised on a normal ferry to Calais with just 50 pounds to her name, but still sank into a spiral of debt, drink and laudanum addiction. This combined with her existing ill health and grief led to her early death at the age of just 49 on the 15th of January, 1815. Nelson's daughter Horatia was brought home by her mother's relatives and taken on by the Matchams to look after their younger children before being sent to live with the Bolton family in 1813. Fortunately, she in adulthood, she enjoyed a happy marriage to Reverend Philip Ward and the couple had 10 children, the eldest of whom was named Horatio Nelson Ward. Horatia never publicly acknowledged that she was the daughter of Emma Hamilton and she died in 1881. Today, you can still enjoy visiting various sites around Merton associated with Lord Nelson. These are part of the famous Nelson Trail. And one of the sites you can visit is Merton Civic Centre, where this portrait, thought to be by the artist Lemuel Abbott, can be seen inside the council chamber. If you would like to know more about Lord Nelson's connections to Merton, you can visit Merton Local Study Centre on the second floor of Morden Library. You can also find more information on our Merton Memories website at www.merton.gov.uk forward slash memories.